In this lesson, we are going to learn how to design the shear walls. ETABS has three different types of shear wall design. The first is simplified compression and detention design. Next is the uniform reinforcing, which can design or shake 3D walls, and this type is the default design type. And the last one is the general reinforcing option, which can design or shake 3D walls using arbitrary reinforcing patterns defined in the section designer, as we will talk later. In this course, I will not talk about simplified compression and detention method, as it is not common use nowadays. Now, I am going to design the main core using the uniform reinforcing method. This method allows us to design the shear walls that have a uniform distributed rivers. So, let's display the main core only. So, go to Select, Labels, then click Peer Labels. Now, choose the core one, then click Select. Then, right click and choose Show Selected Object Only. Next, I need to draw a section in the core. And to do that, go to the Draw menu. Then click on Draw Developed Elevation Definition. Name it Core Section. Then click OK. Then pick up this point and this point to draw an elevation for the core. Now we need to tell ETABS which method I am going to use to design this core. So select all shear walls, then go to the Design menu, Shear Wall Design. Assign beer sections. Here you can see three different types. Click on Uniform Reinforcing. Select the concrete material, which we have defined before, C30. In distributed bars form, you can specify the distributed uniform reinforcing bar size. Also, you can specify the spacing and the clear cover for the rib. And here is the end bars as well as whether the wall should be shaped or designed. So in our case, I need only to set the clear cover, as I am going to choose the reinforcement to be designed, so that I don't need to change any other values. So set the clear cover to 25 mm, then click OK. Now we have assigned this method to all these shear walls in all floors. Next, we need to select the design code. So, go to the design menu, then shear wall design, then select view preferences. Or you can click here, then select view preferences. By default, the design code is taking the ACI code. You can change it if you want, but I will leave the default settings. Only, I need to change the rebar material to T400, which we have defined before, then click OK. Next, we need to set which load combinations which ETAB is going to use for the design. So, click on Shear Wall Design, then click on Select Design Combinations. Here, as you can see, we have all combinations in our project have been listed here. Also here, we have the design combinations that ETAB is going to use for the design. First, I am going to clear all combinations here. So select all of them by clicking the first combo. Then press the shift key. Then select the last one. Then click on this arrow to remove them. Now the question is, which combination I am going to use for the design? So, if you are going to use the equivalent static method, that is mean you need to add the static combinations only. But if you are going to design your building due to the dynamic method, you need to add the dynamic combinations only. So, I am going to design due to the static combinations. So, select UD wall 1, then press the shift key, then select UD wall 22. Then add them to design combinations, then click OK. Now I am going to run the design procedure 
to the stories from the story 1 to the story 7. So select all of them, then click on Shear Wall Design and click on Start Design. As a result of that, it has started the design procedure. Now, as you can see, the required longitudinal reinforcing is displayed on the shear walls. Now we need to take a look at these shear walls to figure out which one of them have the maximum reinforcing in order to move to the next system. So as you can see, the last shear wall has the maximum reinforcement. So right click on it to bring up a detailed design sheet. Here is the story ID which is story 1 and here is the peer label centroid in the x direction and in the y direction total length the shear wall thickness and the live load reduction factor. Also, here is the materials. Now scroll down to flexural design for P ultimate, M2 ultimate, M3 ultimate. Here is the location of a station, top and bottom. Also, here is the required river area. And here is the reinforcement ratio. And it should be between 0.0025 and 0.04. And here is the current ratio. Here is the most critical combo and its total loads. Now I need to convert the required rebar area to bar size and number of bars. And to do that, click on the override button. Now in this form, here we can find the corner bar size and the edge bar size. Suppose that I am going to use bars with diameter 18 And the spacing between the bars, I will take it 25 centimeter. Now click OK. As you can see, the current reinforcement ratio is 0 0.0072 and it's less than the required ratio. So I need to decrease the spacing between bars or changing the bar size. In our case, I am going to change the spacing to 15 cm. So now the current reinforcement ratio is 0 0.012 and it more than the required ratio. Also, if we click on Override, then choose Checked instead of Design. Here we can see the DC ratio and it must be less than 1. So in our case, it is 0.89. So it's okay for now. Back again to Override. Now choose Design. Then click OK. Here is the shear design and here is the shear river required in each leg. You can take the maximum river and apply it to all legs. Also, here is the boundary limits which contain the edge lengths. Now we have finished designing this shear wall using the uniform reinforcing method. You can repeat these steps for other shear walls. Now it is the end of our lesson. In the next lesson, we are going to talk about the general reinforcing method. So hang on for that.